Hi, John. Hello. Hey, Bobby. Hey, David. How you doing? You're good. How are you? Great for a Monday and a tax day. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a big one. Those, yeah, those things double up your pain, right? <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to be done with it. I hear you. Okay, looks like we've got Nico joining. Great. Lane is joining. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hey, Nico. Thanks for joining this morning. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. My pleasure. Hey, everyone. Hello. Hey, Elena. How you doing? All right, all right. It's my first time here. <laughs> well, that's great. Thanks for joining. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. We could do introductions so you can get a chance to meet everyone, and it'd be good to learn more about your interest. All right. I don't know. Yeah, John, feel free to kick it. We can wait another minute or two, or we can kick it off, whatever, whatever you think is best. No, I think we're good to go. I think uh, let's go ahead and kick it off, David, because usually I think we can get wrapped up here in a half an hour if we're lucky. So thanks everyone for joining the onboarding and documentation task force this morning. And I'm John Carpenter, and I do a lot of work with meetups and work with David and Bobby around the onboarding and documentation task force. And uh, we've got Elena joining us today as well, but Bobby, maybe you want to do a quick intro as well? Sure. Hi, Elena. Um, I'm Bobby Mascara. I've been working with the Learning Materials Working Group, and I'm kind of the liaison between the Technical um, Oversight Committee and these task forces. So I'm organizing and trying to get um, them on task and to complete what we're supposed to do in time. So that's kind of I'm like the task master. <laughs> All right, Perfect. thank you so much. And uh, Niku, you want to go ahead and just give a little overview? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so, hi, Elena. Uh, I'm Niku Singh. I'm currently a pre-final year student from NIT Chilangar, India. And uh, I have previously been an LFX mentee for the one of the projects. So, I'm, this year I'm kind of like mentoring the, pro, mentoring the organization as well. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. David, maybe you want to give an overview and then uh, sure. you know, we'll go through the current members and then Elena can give an overview. Sure. Go well, ahead, nice, to, nice to meet you. My name is David Boswell. I'm on staff. I'm the Senior Director of Community Architecture. My role is basically just to support what community members are doing. So I'm here in this call and you'll probably see me in other calls if you go you know, to other calls in the community or in meetups and just, just if I want to hear what y'all are trying to do and if there's a way I can support you, I'm happy to do that. So. That's me. Perfect. And then uh, Tracy, thank you very much for joining again this morning. Uh, you want to just give a quick overview of your background? Yeah. Hello, Tracy Kurt. I am the chair of the Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee. I've been involved in Hyperledger since, I don't know, probably 2015. Um, yeah, that's about me. Okay, great. All right, Elena, so you kind of get a feel for the group that's joined here, and this is your first mm -hmm. time. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and what you're most interested in with this particular task force? All right. Uh, first of all, thanks of all, uh, thanks a lot for everyone uh, for making such a profound in introduction for me. So that's uh, really nice, and uh, thanks so much for this warm welcome. So my name is uh, Yelena Trishova and I'm a program manager at Exact Pro. Uh, you probably heard of Exact Pro because we uh, tried out uh, the uh, Hyperledger membership back in 2019, I believe. And David, I have worked with you when we organized the Hyperledger community group in Tbilisi. I was uh, among oh, one of right, the organizers. Right. Oh, that's yes. right, that's right. Yes, and we also held a beautiful event there in Tbilisi, so I still do remember this one. Unfortunately, we weren't able to um, proceed with our membership, so uh, the group is uh, kind of, um, so we did, uh, weren't able to come up with uh, further 
um, events there, but uh, I can see that you guys came up with this exciting op opportunity for the groups like to involve everyone uh, through the online uh, events. And I can see that the group is still alive and I can see uh, new members joining like every month or so. So uh, it's nice that uh, the community supports it uh, uh, even when we are not able to. <laughs> Uh, so uh, about myself a little bit. Uh, so software uh, testing is the focus of the company that I work for. Uh, and uh, quite recently, we started a documentation practice uh, and uh, I lead the group. Um, so we're exploring uh, our ways um, for documentation and uh, we are adopting the approach of documentation as a code. So uh, I've seen uh, your overview of the technologies behind it and found it very exciting. Um, so uh, basically what I'm uh, looking for in this group, I want to uh, understand how you guys uh, try to, um, to tackle the challenges around uh, open source documentation. Uh, what are your approaches? What technologies do you use? So for me, uh, it's more on the learning side. Um, and if I, just just in case, if I can help with anything, uh, I also will be open to that. Thank you. Great, Elena. Thanks for uh, giving us that overview and welcome to the group. And, you know, however you'd like to get engaged with the group, just let us know and we can you know, make sure that you're, you know, part of either the onboarding side or the documentation side or both, if you're interested. And we'd love to have you be a part of the group. Thank you. Okay, so I think to kick this off, you know, we had a great meetup and David, thanks for all your wonderful help. And also thanks to Min and, uh, you know, it really turned out to be a nice meetup around the mentorship program. And so, David, what do you think we had? About 70 people that joined the mentorship live meetup event? Uh, yeah, about that. Yeah, I can see if I pulled the numbers yet for those. Um, but yeah, it was a good audience and there's a lot of views on YouTube too at the time and then after. So yeah, it seemed like it was something that people were interested in. Looks like it was 87 people joined the, the YouTube. 87 the, people the was at the top. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, I, I was kind of just watching it as it went along and it seemed like it was generally in the, you know, 60 to 70 group, but you know how it always varies over the mm -hmm. time. So that's good. And I, and I really want to say Min did an excellent job of going over and giving an overview of the program and the background of the program and the opportunity. And also it was really nice to have Daniela join the call and kind of give a, you know, kind of a wrap up to the call as well. So I thought it went really well, David and, and, I can see that there was good community engagement. So any other thoughts around that? Bobby, what did you think about the meetup that we just held there? Yeah, I thought it went really, really well. Um, and uh, I think that hopefully a lot of people apply from, you know, take the chance and fill out the application. We kind of made it so easy and, you know, here is the application filling out. <laughs> so hopefully it will uh, yield some results. Yeah, agreed. Thank you, John and Bobby, for doing that. And I do think beyond just the, the that particular meetup, I think there's a general takeaway we can have here that applies both to the documentation task force and the onboarding task force. I think it really shows that when we have something such as new documentation, for example, or information about how to get involved, or, you know, I think people are really interested in it and we can make that available and have a lot of people check it out, right? I think this goes to maybe what we've said in the past that there's interesting content out there, but it's just, how do we make people aware of it? So I think, you know, the meetups are a good channel when there's new, if for example, we do the task force does or the mentors do new documentation for a project, you know, we can, instead of having to just sit somewhere where people can't find it, you know, we can really get that out into channels where people do want to learn about it and find out about it. So just, yeah. I think the meetups are are one way to really, you know, let people know what's going on in whatever we're doing. So I think it went, I thought it went really well. Great. And uh, I'll also say Nico's on here. And Nico, you saw that we got an application for the Start Here uh, mentorship program that we're running this year. 
And so, you know, we've already had some interest. And Bobby, I don't know if you've seen any other applicants come through for your particular uh, mentorship this year. Um, I have not checked yet. Um, I did receive a few emails, um, but I wasn't sure if they actually finished the application. Okay, yeah. And that's what I saw too, Bobby, was, you know, more of an interest versus a, you know, complete the whole application process. So, you know, I'm sure we'll give it another, uh, you know, couple of weeks here to get those coming in. And David, if you have any thoughts around, you know, additional promotion for people to apply to those mentorships, you know, let me know. And, you know, if we need to even write up a blog posting or anything like that, you know, I'm glad to work with you on that. I think Min has a, thanks for that offer. I think Min has been talking to Emily about a blog post. Um, I think Min's got kind of a, 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 a marketing plan, but yeah, I'll let her know that this group is willing, willing to help if she's needing anybody, you know, to help support further. Okay, great. And then Niku, did you see anything additional come through under than the one inquiry that we got on the mentorship program there? Yeah, I saw quite a lot of people have applied. Uh, and like the number is quite promising. And Good. Uh, one more thing is that uh, I do have a proposal. Uh, could you just conduct a session in my college regarding this happiness of uh, mentorship, specifically for my college students? Is that possible? Is it possible? Sure, of course. I mean, if you, I mean, if you want to take some of the content from that meetup and and you know share it, or, or sure, absolutely. That's any help you can to spread the word. Sure, that's great. Sure, I'll just confirm the dates and we'll let you know. Yeah. Yeah, and if it's a convenient time, I can always hop on and do it. Um, and I'm sure Min would be interested too um, to get the word out. Yeah, that's great, yeah, Niku. Sure. You know, we we always want to do all promotion possible and get you know people engaged in the community, and I'm glad to help you as well. So you know, you got a whole bunch of help here, if you want it for your college there. Thanks, thanks, thanks for that. Okay, uh, I see that we've also got Devesh on the call, and Devesh, you joined a little bit later, so maybe you want to just give a quick intro as to your background and what you have an interest in this group? Yeah, I'm sorry for joining late. Uh, so I, I'm Devesh Mina and I'm from India. Uh, I'm currently pursuing computer science from uh, NIT Jalandhar. So, and I have been exploring uh, Hyperledger ecosystem for a while and I have done a few contributions also and I'm looking forward to contribute even more. So, thank you. And what uh, Hyperledger projects have you been contributing to? What What is kind of your focus for that? Uh, I'm a beginner, so I have been contributing to the BASU uh, documentation. Uh, Good. I have done uh, uh, made two PRs uh, up till now. Nice. Okay, well, thanks for joining, uh, Devesh. And, you know, any way that you want to get involved here, either with, you know, helping with the onboarding process or helping with documentation, you know, don't hesitate. Yes, definitely. To yeah, yeah yep. I'll be very interested in it. Okay, great. I'll just post my email in here if you want to reach out and I can give you, you know, point you to resources if that'll help as well. Sure, I'll look into it. Okay. Uh, next thing is we should just talk about, Bobby, you want to talk a little bit about any updates on the documentation side of the coin here? Sure, I was wondering which one we were gonna start with because I have them both ready. Um, so let me share my screen. And we're starting with documentation, you said, hold on just a second. If it's more convenient for you, Bobby, we can Doesn't start matter. with onboarding. Let, let's start with onboarding since you're, uh, you I know, just I, it. I know I, I'm all about uh, whatever's easiest for you. How's that sound? Um, I think onboarding might be easier. So I'm going to go back to onboarding. Let's do that. That's a great uh, idea. Because documentation is the one I'm still having some uh, need for clarity um, in my, my own perspective of it. So again, this is the onboarding task force, the onboarding task force. And John, when you were referring um, in your conversation before 
about the start here. You were talking about the onboarding, correct? Yeah, start here is really what I think that Arun last year did a wonderful job on the mentorship to get that kind of put together in, in the framework. And I think that's really a great place to consolidate, you know, the onboarding going forward. And that's really what the mentorship that I'm working with Niku and Peter on, uh, trying to drive that to greater fruition in 2023. Okay, so um, as, as it stands right now, I just wanted to add that in there so I don't forget. Um, where we really are in the task force is we're still trying to come up with uh, recommendations for the different points of onboarding. And we now have a few more points to go through. So I'm gonna recap real quick the entry points. So as a new user, you're gonna come in on the website, the wiki page, the GitHub, Discord, um, or uh, recent issues. I'm not sure where that, I think this is um, up with the website, um, but I'm not sure. This is, uh, Niku, this is your stuff that's fabulous that we have to incorporate everywhere we possibly can because it was wonderful. Um, but so I think Peter was going to go look at the website and go through the different links for use and learn. And I'm not sure if he's um, just busy during this time. Um, so maybe we can also assign that to someone else. And what that basically is, is you go to the website, you go to the button that says use, you go through all the links and come up with recommendations as to how we can improve it for people who come to the first time um, to the website. Um, and yeah. then John, you had gone through your participate and you said everything, I'm not really sure what your final recommendation was. I think you were gonna add it in here at some point. Yeah, I'll add it in there, Bobby. There's just a few tweaks that need to be done. And as we talked about on a call, you know, a couple calls ago, it was for the web developer at Hyperledger to make a few changes and, you know, kind of do that integration deal. And again, that's probably something that we should talk about um, after we go through this list is how do we get changes to the website and not step on anyone's toes or do they want our input? Like how's that gonna work? But that's probably more for the end. Um, so then the next thing was the wiki page and we had looked at this piece here. Um, and then David said that um, he was gonna look into maybe updating that presentation that was there. And the only recommendation we had was for some quick links on that page. Um, where the presentation is, depending on who you are. Um, so not everybody needs the same presentation. So maybe um, have quick links for developers as opposed to signatures, you know, whatever, however that's gonna look. Um, and then the GitHub, that was new. So no one's done GitHub or Discord yet. So if anyone wants to go over as a new user, hitting those two locations, what you see and how easy it is to navigate, we'd appreciate that. Um, if you want to just raise your hand in the chat or write in the chat that you can do that, that's great. And we'll add your names in here. Um, and I think next was the frequently asked questions. And that was from the um, wiki page button here. Um, and Tracy was going to, um, I think, look at those a little bit. And our recommendations were that they should have categories and they should be updated. Um, and then the last piece to the getting start and butting on the button on the wiki page was getting an ID and that's just pretty much self-explanatory and you know should be there. Um, the recent issues that and and what Niku brought up with with this uh, wireframe um, again this is where I need some some guidance like if this group comes up with recommendations for the web page and say Niku works with the mentee on what that looks like do like how does that work, David? Are we going to be able to um, get that through? You know, you know where I'm confused, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, so that's a good point. And, and I think this is why it's helpful to do this audit. And so there's multiple entry points, right? And different people are involved with changing those. So like the wiki is straightforward, right? Like I think, you know, if we want to make changes to the wiki main page, that's more straightforward than making changes to the home, to the website, for example. Sure. Uh, um, 
But for the website specifically, that's yeah something we'll want to have a conversation with Ben about. I think the timing works out well. Uh, um, I think I may have covered this in the past. He is working with an agency right now to redesign the website to fit with the new brand that he presented a few weeks ago. Um, I have not seen that yet. I think one thing we can do is when there are some mock-ups or when there's a staging site where it's under development, if we could get access to that and share it, you know, I think we could have, hopefully have some feedback with him back and forth. We can review it, send some ideas, thoughts. Um, so that's what I'm hoping, but that's not to say, you know, I think at any point, you know, I think it, even, even after the new website goes live, I think, you know, we should always be able to give him feedback, right? But I think sure. the, the time is particularly good right now since they are in the process of developing a new site, you know, uh, so that's what I would say, like, let's get our recommendations together. When there is something that he has to share, I'll share it, uh, uh, and then we can, you know, give him feedback on it. Uh, um, is there any way that you could maybe see if he can come next week to the call and show us where he's at? I can ask. I mean, I did ask him last week, and he hasn't. He does. There's nothing to share yet. I think it would probably be best to invite him when there is something he has to share. Uh, um, what about the reverse if we showed him some of the stuff that Nika was working on? We certainly can. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, we can invite him. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, I guess that would, you know, because again, we don't know how much work we can do on the website until we hear it from him. So. Sure. And the website is going to change substantially. So like what, you know, what we may be looking at you know, we might be recommending changes to a page that doesn't exist well, anymore, yeah, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. to spin our wheels on this one too much without getting some clearance. Well, well yeah, that's why I was thinking the next step would be, let's see what it is that he's doing and then provide feedback on it, certainly. I, I think I'd shared, he's told me his general approach to the new website, and so that could help us with our thinking. And just to, to share again what I have heard, he's trying to radically cut down on the amount of content on the website. He's analyzed the user flow when people come to the website and they, as you might imagine, is basically just scanning. Like, like people don't spend a lot of time on a page. Like what he's hoping for is to provide a very scannable website. And then when people find the thing they want to dive into, link off to it so they can then do a deeper dive. So like have, I think yep. his view of the website is very like bullet points, right? And headings and that sort of a thing. So there's not going to be a lot of content as it were. I mean, he mm -hmm. really wants to see that deeper dive content in other places like on the wiki or on GitHub or wherever it may be, right? Yeah, yeah no, 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 that makes complete sense. One question I'd have for you, David, is uh, has the agency provided Ben with a heat map of the Hyperledger website and, you know, based on the user experience there, that might tell you, you know. Of the current the one? Yeah, of the current website. Mm -hmm. I imagine, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not fully in the loop on the website stuff. Uh, um, so I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I would suppose so, but I don't know for sure. Okay. Yeah, no, no problem. I think where we're coming from, David, is, you know, we want to be collaborative with Ben and make sure that he knows we're here as a resource, but you know, he's driving the new design and you know knows what he wants to accomplish. And yeah, yeah. You know, we just want to be collaborative and let him know that we're here to help, not hinder his design. No, that's great. And I think we definitely need to have a conversation with him or want to have a conversation with him. It's I'll defer to you about when if you want to do it sooner rather than later, or wait. We could wait until he has something to share or talk to him before. I mean. Whatever y'all would prefer, I, I can reach out and invite them. Yeah, and I think what, where Bobby's coming from is great. You know, kind of like, hey, Ben, if you want to join the call for five or 10 minutes, just have a quick intro, let you know we're here to collaborate right. with you and, you know, follow your design lead and just, you know, provide additional content that's going to be helpful to the user experience let going me... forward. Yeah. Let me invite him. I'll ping him and see what he says. Um, okay. And if it's not convenient for him, David, no problem. You know, he's he's not a part of this group, but, you know, he's kind of critical to what we're doing here that we want to be efficient about, 
you know, what we're designing and providing to him and not, you know, impede any of his. Sure. Work. Well, I will ping him and I'll let you know if he can join and, and we can put it on the agenda then. Great. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Uh -huh. Sure. Okay, Bobby, great job on that. What I'll do is I'll also ping Peter because I know he wasn't able to join today and find out about the use and learn uh, tabs. And if he's not able to complete that, I'll work on that between now and the next call. Perfect. And I will ask Elena and Devesh if they want to put their names here on the GitHub and the Discord. And all you'd have to do over the course of the week is pretend you're a new user and go to those two locations and maneuver around and come back and report back to us how easy, hard, and what you think should be changed. So, um, Elena, if you're interested in jumping on, would you like to do the Discord or the GitHub? Um, let me start with GitHub. Perfect. So as a new user, you go to the Hyperledger GitHub, maneuver around, and then next week, come back and let us know where you think as a new user, it would be confusing and how we could probably make that better. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. All right. I can do that. And Devesh, can I put your name on Discord? Uh, yeah, sure. I can do that. Great. Thank you. That would be very helpful. And awesome. then the thing left is, David, do you have any idea on a new presentation to a welcome community kind of thing? Or do you want the mentee to work on that? Oh, uh, an update to the how to get involved presentation? Yeah, because we kind of need weekly tasks for the mentee to do on onboarding. And until we know what the redesign of the wiki page for new users is going to look like, I'm thinking that might be something he can work on too. He or she could work on. Well, the step back a little bit, I do like having a clear task list. Maybe we do need to start developing that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, I would say, again, my my thought on the task for the Minty is more of a workflow diagram. Like we've got all these different web properties. We've kind of been viewing them individually. Like Ben is looking at the website, for example, but I don't, I don't think there's any really flow about how these things all fit together into a larger universe. Like how does somebody go from the website to the wiki to GitHub to this, to that, the other, like I would, I personally would think it would be helpful for a, um, if they've got the UX skills for somebody to start putting those web work, you know, the workflow or web flows together. Sure. Yep. You know, isn't that Niku what you were working on? Yeah, I had made a few things so regarding that. Uh, well, I think, like, yeah. Last time you said that uh, go through the wiki page and search some uh, things which, where we can improve those things. So I just, let me just present some thing that I was working on. Uh, and I have to drop in a minute, so I'll just share my thoughts real quick. I mean, I think what Nico did last year was great. And I think it's my understanding, and maybe I'm wrong, but those were updates to, or recommended updates to some existing pages, but it's still, I think my main thing is how do we get people there? Like if, for example, this, page like how do you what is the flow how do you go from the entry point to get here right like i think that's sure. what we don't have yet right like we Correct. have again we have good content out there we have useful resources out there it's just like i think we need to have an understanding of how people get there right and i'm sorry i do have to drop at 9 30 but uh, um ping me if yeah, i that, can help and yeah that makes perfect sense david and i agree with you 100 percent. so you know the ux design will have to show a flow you know, an optimal way to get people to their destination as quickly as possible with not going so many layers deep into the breadcrumb trail. Yeah, because I think there are situations where you just can't get there from here to use that expression, right? Like start here is helpful, but you don't really find it from the website, right? Like that's what I'm saying. We need to connect these things together and feel how you, how do you get from one to the other, right? But and I but I do have to drop, so I'm sorry. I, I'll join uh, next week. Okay, thank here. you very much, David. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Right, bye. Yep. Okay, Bobby, great job on that. 
uh, piece. Anything else we want to cover on the onboarding side at this time? Well, so, so far this week's tests, again, was to uh, prioritize um, of these, which is going to be really the most important. And I guess right now it would be the wiki page since we really can't touch the um, website yet until we find out what we can and cannot do. So again, some of these things on the wiki page, like the frequently asked questions um, and that intro uh, getting started goes right to the presentation. Maybe again, if somebody wants to work on mocking up that page. So when you're on the wiki and you go to getting involved in Hyperledger, yes, we should have that presentation there, but there should be more there so that people can make other choices than to watch the 10 minute video. Um, so if anybody wants to jump on that one, you can either volunteer right now or just put your name here during the week. And then next week, give us your report on what you think that getting involved with Hyperledger wiki page should look like. Um, and then again, we all have, uh, not we all, <laughs> uh, we have to keep in mind that there are different users for all of these entry points as well. So Great. These are some of the users that would be there. So again, quick links and categories are really important when you have multiple users. So that's also something to keep in mind. Like if I'm onboarding and I'm very technical or I'm onboarding and I'm a business owner wondering if Hyperledger blockchain is going to work for me, there are two different ways. There's Those are two completely different ways to go. So, you know, let's see how that works um, when we're working on these recommendations for next week. Does anybody yeah. have any questions or insights on onboarding before we move to documentation? Those uh, users that you highlight above, Bobby, are great. And I agree with you 100%. That was the thing I was referring to as kind of the, in the web world, the persona. Mm -hmm. so, so we should kind of flag those as, you know, here's our six personas that we need yep. to look at for as far as these six people navigate the online presence that would be quite a matrix to figure out but maybe something to work on yeah uh, no i think it's a great thing to work on and i think it really will affect the flow because you know what a maintainer is going to want is going to be entirely different than what a business person is going to want out of hyperledger when they're onboarding yep okay so now I'm going to move to documentation. Now this one is where I'm getting a little um, need for, I need some clarity because I'm not really sure what the deliverables exactly are for the task force and the mentee. So for me, um, I'm thinking just initially for the mentee, um, and I want our mentee to work with the other mentees. And I've talked to David a little bit about this um, because down here I listed all of the um, mentee applications that had documentation needs. And I'm not sure if they all got accepted, but if they didn't, they still need the documentation needs. And it's something that this task force should address. So. Sure. That's one of the ways. So they're all looking for templates and guidelines. A lot of them are coming from GitHub to read the docs and they would like guidance on that process. A lot of them are just, you know, what needs to be on our wiki page and so far as best practices for documentation. That's another delip. So there's a lot of nuances to the different um, ways the mentee can be used. So I do think this is important, but it's really hard for me to get my head around the mentee doing this when the part, when the, the purpose of the documentation task force is to create those things. So I don't know like how you put the chicken before the egg or the egg before the chicken. I don't know how he's going to give suggestions for these people who during their mentorship have to document when his mentorship is figuring out what they have to document. Sure. So that's my confusion, I guess. Yeah, and I go agree with you on that, Bobby. It's a little bit confusing as to which comes first, right? You know, or I think maybe we do have some things together. And maybe as a task force, we need to organize those quickly, quickly before the mentees come on board. So here, basically, in task two, 
is like exp what are down here is what are our deliverables so that common style guide goes back to that's on board and let's say this so as tracy had mentioned previously there's there was a um mentorship program a few years ago that tried to tackle this uh documentation for the uh developers and maintainers when they're creating the documentation for the community which is vital i mean you can't use the product if you can't read about it and understand it Correct. So, actually, all... actually, Bobby, this this template is just new, so I just created this thing uh, nice. not too long ago. Oh, okay. Um, is there anywhere I should be pointing from the work from that first uh, mentorship program? Uh, that I don't know where that um, information is. Okay, I'll go back and look for it. Yeah, I'll I'll find it if it's and see if it's relevant. Yeah, this Wait, is Tracy awesome, Tracy. <laughs> maybe, uh, Tracy, you want to talk a little bit about, since this is new, uh, what we have here and what, how that might apply to the mentorship? Uh, sure. So this is a, a template repo that other people can use when they create their documentation. Um, so for new projects or projects that are looking to revamp their documentation. I know Stephen Curran, um, use this template when he created his Akapai, um documentation site just uh, just last week. So nice. this basically uses make, uh, material for make docs, um, which you can find a link to. And we also within Hyperledger have access to the insider capabilities within that. I'm not sure that this template specifically uses any of the insider uh, capabilities, but obviously if people want to for their documentation, they can. Um, what this basically does is provide a template of suggested, um, like a suggested table of contents, if you will, for what should be included in uh, documentation for new projects. Um, the, if you, um, oh, that's okay. I was going to say if if you click on, uh, if you go back and click on at the top right. There is a link. Yeah, if you click on that, I will show you what this actually uh, converts to um, with basically the different, um, at the top, you can see there's a menu, uh, introduction concepts, getting started. So these are basically the recommendation of, of what we would want to include in any sort of project documentation. Obviously, people can change that if they think there's something else that they need to include specifically for their project. Um, this particular page here just gives an introduction on what this repo is and what changes somebody would need to make in order to make this reflect their particular project. Um, so like, for example, this site name, um, Hyperledger uh, Bevel. Right now, it's set for Hyperledger underscore project, and you can see that at the very top of the screen. Mm -hmm. um where that's basically the title for it um you can also then uh, specify the repo uh, so which repo you would go to if you click on at the upper right uh, right now for this particular template except for hyperledger lab slash documentation template um so basically it um these are the instructions that you would exactly bobby these are the instructions you would go through to make sure that this gets updated to reflect whatever your project is. Um, and so, yeah, it, and then it really is just creating the, the documentation to fill in each of these different concepts and um, the getting started pages for how you install it, how you run it, different tutorials that you might want to provide for the, the people who are um, going to be using your project, um, different sorts of guides, uh, be them architecture guides, command line guides, uh, roadmaps, anything that you think might be useful for people to be able to reference related to a particular project. Uh, this next section is on contributing and how you contribute to the project, how you report a bug or request a change or ask a question. Uh, then there's an FAQ page that you can, you know, obviously write your frequently asked questions and a glossary page for um, making sure that people who are new to this might uh, need to understand particular terms they can go in and, and look at those so basically all of these uh pieces of information are then filled in in the the document 
so if you go back, Bobby, just to the GitHub repo, we can take a look at what that looks like. Um, so basically what we've got is the make docs.yaml file that's listed here. Uh, this file is the one that basically needs to be updated to reflect all those different changes to um, reference basically the, um, the project name, the project icon, uh, things like that. Uh, it's also the place where you create your table of contents. So if you need to add any new things to the table of contents, that's where you would add it um, to point to the uh, respective markdown file. Uh, and then in the docs directory, that's where all the markdown files go. Um, and so in here, you'll see uh, index.md. That's basically that introduction page that we were looking at. Um, the glossary.md, obviously, FAQs and then separate directories for the ones that are going to have basically multiple sorts of pages, right? So multiple tutorials, there'll be a tutorials directory that people can go in and um, you know, create their markdown files for that. Uh, and so basically it's, it's a matter of you know, copying this repo to your own GitHub repo and filling in the details, adding uh, any sort of information that, that makes sense to add. Um, and, you know, once you do that, you'll have the GitHub pages um, that will be created. Um, and you're off to the races, basically. Nice. Yeah, that's a wonderful run through, uh, Tracy, and really a nice uh, resource for sure. And then how did Stephen think about implementing that for his project? He thought it was... Yeah, he, he did have one pull request that he put into the readme itself. Um, just yep. to provide uh, some information. Um, uh, we'll see if he does any additional pull requests to make things any different or better. Um, but he definitely, you know, thought it was a, a useful thing. Um, and uh, I did take a look at his particular um, documentation that he created. And it's, it's really interesting. So I'll see if I can find the links here and, and put those in the chat just so you can um, see exactly how this turned out. Uh, so here's the here's the rendered version um, that I just put in the chat. And then let me go find the GitHub repo for this. Nice. And right, look at that link. Yeah, super clean, super easy to flow through on the deal. And then this is the the GitHub repo um, that generates that site. So uh, it's actually not the one that's linked. Oh, maybe he changed that. Um, but yeah, that's the one. Uh, so anyway, this is uh, this is basically what he did. Is he took this template and created this uh, particular website from it, um, so that you can now get information on the different Acupy, um and how to how to use Acupy. So I think it worked fairly well. He did he did obviously expand some stuff in his readme and we might want to take a look at exactly um, what he has here and maybe potentially update the, the template um, to include a bit more. But uh, yeah, I think it uh, seems like it must have worked fairly well because like it was what two weeks maybe after I we mentioned this in the um, in the TOC meeting and then we've got this website set up. So um, Fairly happy to see that somebody's using it. Yeah, no, that's a quick update for sure, Tracy. And beyond Aries, does it look like any of the other projects would want to use the same framework, or how does that seem from the rest of the community? Yeah, I haven't specifically heard of anybody doing it at this point. Um, but you know, there are a number of different, as Bobby pointed out, mentorship projects that are out there. Uh, it's very possible that somebody might decide that they want to revamp the way that all of their documentation is done and, and move towards this. We'll see. Yeah, to me, that would be wonderful. Yeah, go ahead, Bobby. But I know in the beginning, sense. I know in the beginning of some of these meetings about um, this, especially with the people from BASU, they, they still wanted to be able to have some choices on what it their 
you know, documentation look like, but still have it in Hyperledger. Is this just one theme or are there other themes that people in the community can choose from that have been basically Hyperledger approved or winked at, you know what I mean? Yeah, so MakeDocs is obviously, um, can have can support multiple themes, right? So material for MakeDocs is one of those themes. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very possible that other people could use make docs, but not use material for make docs. I think the reason that uh, I created this with material for make docs is because we had the insiders um, piece, right? Uh, capabilities that Hyperledger is specifically paying for. Um, and so that's why I based the template off of that. Now, obviously, you know, if you look at makedocs.org, there's a number of different themes that are, are specified there. Um, that could potentially be used. And I think it just really depends on, you know, what it what it is. The other piece of this is um, like the coloring. There's a lot of there's a lot of customization you can do to the material for make docs. Um, mm -hmm. that, you know, obviously I just basically chose something that was fairly plain. Um, but you know, there's options to change the coloring theme if people want to like maybe you know with the aries one maybe they wanted to make it green instead of blue as the the top um right like i think that's probably something that they could do very easily um but do you, you think know, that we do have recommendations on to color schemes and stuff like like here, here pick from one of these three hyperledger color schemes or uh, do you think that that's something they want complete autonomy over um, I, I mean, I think we should set a default probably. And then if people want to do something different, they could. Um, my, I think the recommendation that I would have is let's use the default Hyperledger color scheme. So I, I know, right, Hyperledger is very branding right now. I think my recommendation would be that instead of using the blue, right, as the, as the top uh, for the thing, maybe we pick the, the default, um, branding color that exists for Hyperledger, right? Uh, and then, yep. you know, maybe as an alternative, if somebody wants to use an alternative color scheme, um, I would recommend that they use the color of their logo, right? So Aries sure. has a green logo, they would use the green uh, of that logo. Uh, you know, Bevel has, what is it? Something like purple, um, Bevel would use the purple uh, for their, um for their color scheme but to me i think it's it's one or the other right like use the default for hyperledger or use the color scheme for your logo yeah i think brand consistency is critical tracy mm -hmm. and i and i agree with you that you know people don't want to come to the hyperledger website and say well what's you know what website am i on they want to feel comfortable that this is the hyperledger you know foundation content and that's good. Okay, perfect. Well, Tracy, you did a wonderful job on that. And I think if yeah, we can absolutely. get more projects to adopt that framework, I think- And, and I wanna correct the beginning be of my conversation. I wanna say, and now we have something for the mentee to show the other mentees how to do their documentation. Yes, there you go, there you go. So now I, I have a clear thing for the first training for the mentee is going to be learning these this process so he can show it to these folks when Min gets them together for an inter uh, sorry an introduction on uh, the menteeship program. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that, and I and I think the timing couldn't have been better for Tracy to have completed that right before the mentorship program kicks off. So I think we're in great shape on that. Yep. Okay, so what are our next step for this task force? Well, we have time before, I think we should start at a list of mentee tasks. Um, so that we can have those clear and concise by the time he or she gets here. Um, yep. And I'm not sure. What do you think, John, for these other 
style guides and stuff, do we want to do a wiki page for documentation with like, again, the categories so that if you're looking for this, you click here, click here, or what do you think that the task force, how should the task force hand this to the TOC? Yeah, well, I, I'm a big fan of brand consistency, Bobby, and I feel like when you got a structure like what Tracy's put together here that works, you know, I'd rather have more work put into, you know, working with each one of the Hyperledger projects and having a consistent documentation look and feel that's complete across the project. So, you know, I guess that, that's where I, I look at the work product being best suited to the community. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Perfect. Got it. Okay, so for next week, I will work on the two sets of de deliverables to get them in a clearly defined um, list. So this is what the mentee will do, and this is what we're going to do, um, although a lot of it's done already, thanks to Tracy. But I think there is, again, the need for um, a place to look for documentation, because I think that's a problem for the community is when they want to read something, unless it's specifically tied to a project, it's hard to find the YouTube videos or the, and even when you get to the projects, there's been some great videos and great uh, sessions and meetups and stuff, but it, it's really hard to locate those. And that was always something without the learning materials working group wiki page, I thought that needed to be addressed but again that's something that we need to discuss as a task force to figure out you know how we best suit how we best serve the community when they're looking to read something or looking to learn something yep exactly bobby i couldn't agree with you more so anybody have any comments on this or want to volunteer to do any other tasks um, Let, no. Let's just do one thing, uh, Bobby, and it looks like, you know, Akash, if you want to do a quick intro of yourself and uh, your background and why you're interested in the group, I know you joined just a little bit later, that'd be wonderful, and maybe you may be interested in collaborating on what Bobby's outlined here. And Akash, I don't know if you want to come off mute or... If you're on the call, maybe not. Anybody else interested in providing additional feedback to Bobby around this? Uh, well, yes, uh, I wanted to comment on the documentation template. So I uh, liked it very much. And uh, that's kind of job that uh, my team um, at Exactra is uh, currently trying to do for internal documentation. So we are also working on the template. So I really feel uh, what you have done here, and that's great. And uh, speaking of that, uh, when we came up uh, with this problem, uh, we uh, decided so uh, we decided to make a template for our internal teams uh, to use um, for document documenting their own projects, sub projects. So uh, there is no adoption yet, but because we are still working on the template. Uh, but uh, when we started to think about it, uh, we um, mm, um, we started also to think about the problem. So, for example, we have finished our template, uh, then some of the teams adopted that. Uh, then uh, we received some feedback and decided to change the template. What happens to those who are already uh, implemented uh, the templates, uh, the, the, te the template and their documentation? So, and that's why one of my uh, specialists uh, came up with the idea uh, of publishing some parts, some, mm, I don't know, uh, some not changing parts uh, of the template into a package. And uh, we have published it on NPM uh, registry uh, so that uh, those who uh, adopt mm, the template, uh, so the changes are automatically applied as well uh, to those who are already using it even after we change the template itself. So just uh, um, something to think about. Sure. Maybe, 
if you're interested in that, uh, I can ask uh, the specialist, uh, like, uh, what is the applicability and uh, whether it can be done with this template as well. Uh, if so, uh, I can update you on that. Yeah, that sounds great. Bobby, what are your thoughts around that collaboration? I think that's great. And if you have any thoughts, we'll give you some time next Monday and you can show us um, how it works and what it looks like. All right. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. All right. So if anybody has anything else to say, raise your hand now. Uh, hi, uh, I had one question. So uh, as you mentioned this term mentee, can, can you give me more info ab uh, about it? Uh, I'd like to know more. Sure. So the documentation task force started um, a while ago through the um, learning materials working group. And these are the recent tasks that we're trying to cover. Um, but if you go down on this wiki page, which I'll just drop the link in the chat for everybody to make it easy to find. Okay, everybody should have it. Um, these are some of the things that we completed before, um, before it became a task force for the TOC when it was just a task force under the learning materials working group. So we wanted to try to get these four items um, and we did a survey initially, and these were the results of the survey of what the community wanted to see out of the documentation. Um, and you can go through that, it's all up here. And then we did where was the documentation, what each project is using. So that's this grid here. So you'll see all the projects down this side and exactly what they're using and links to those documentations for the comparison that we did, where's the comparison? Oh, I don't know where the comparison is. Let me see. I'll have to get a link for that. He did it. Ben did a great comparison of them. Um, and I'm not sure where the link is, but I'll find that and put it on this page. It could be the survey. I'm not sure where it is. I'll have to find the link. Um, but that's basically where this came out of. And then again, Tracy showed us that great result of kind of um, making, because the results of the survey was everybody wanted guidance. They really wanted a little, they wanted more guidance on what to do with their documentation than flexibility to make it look like their own. Um, so that's basically what uh, Tracy kind of summed up there for that. Um, but there's also other documentation needs other than just, I'm sorry, I'm scrolling so fast. Um, other than just that style guide for your GitHub repository. Um, there's people making, want to make YouTube videos. There's people who want to make presentations. We want to offer them templates as well, as well as collect that information that they're gathering um, so that people who want to read and learn can easily access uh, the documentation. So maybe a guide on how to access or use the Hyperledger library. I, we don't know what that looks like yet. That's where we're trying to determine. So I guess the first steps was with the um, GitHub repositories and make the docs, which is very helpful for the mentee program coming up because most of those projects in some way, shape or form wanted to document um, what they were doing. So that's basically where it came from. Um, does that answer your question? Uh, actually, I wanted to know about this mentorship program only, like what it is and uh, is it available for uh, everyone? Yes, it is. We would encourage you to apply for it. Each one, and I'm gonna show you that right now. I'll drop that link in here too. Um, so these are, let me go through this very quickly. And again, spread this information we're giving you right now to everyone you can. So I just dropped this link in here. This is this year's mentorship program dates. So you still have all this time to read over the projects and decide which one you want to apply for. We encourage you not to apply for a whole lot. We encourage you to do your research and maybe find two that you really like. Three if you can't decide, but no more than that, because we really want you to be vested in it. 
Um, and again, these are the um, information on the stipends where it depends on what country you live in. And then mentorship projects for 2023. I find this very helpful because it lists the projects and their uh, focus. So here's the project and here's the focus. So if you go to our documentation, it's gonna take me a second to find it in this list right here, you'll see what that particular mentee is, uh, what we're requesting of that mentee. Um, so each one of the programs has the uh, information about what it wants you to do for that program. And then you would apply and then you would hear if you can got accepted as the paid mentee. We do encourage people who um, are interested in a certain project and may not have gotten that one particular mentee position to um, join the project anyway. Um, and I know that in the project that I did two years ago um, and Hardik just jumped on the call so coincidentally, um, there was a girl, Madhu, who um, wanted to be a part of it um, and, and, you know, joined us and made every meeting and she actually won an award for her involvement in it um, from the Government Blockchain Association. And, you know, she had a great experience. So there's so many ways to get involved. So don't let um, anything hold you back from applying. Did that answer your question this time? Yeah, definitely. That did answer my question. Thank you. Okay, so if anybody has any more questions, I guess, John, are we ready to end? Yep, we're ready to end. Great call, everyone. I really appreciate you joining today and look forward to reconvening. See everybody next week. Have a great one. Thank you.